But then put a new string on it, his anger flared up, and he took the guitar down the basement, and he just busted it out. Another time, my mother had just bought my dad a new chair. He hadn't had it very long, and he sat down in it, and a spring broke in it. And rather than get it repaired, his anger about the best of him, he took it outside, he struck a match to it, and burned it up. I, in, I inherited that anger. So that was one of my big enemies. And I knew that, but I didn't know how to overcome it. Because you know how anger is. Somebody does something to you, and it just flares up. Ah, uh, but I learned how to deal with that. Because the Lord said, I have prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So I learned when my anger would flare up, to begin to feed upon the lamb. And eventually I got to the place where if I even sensed my anger coming, I would immediately begin to turn within to my spirit and I'd begin to speak to the Lord. And I just say, Lord, I'm so thankful to know that at the cross you took away the sin of the world. And Lord, I know that as I turn my heart to you, the veil will be taken away. And Lord, as I feast at that wonderful table that you prepared for me, you prepared that table of forgiveness. Lord, you prepared for me the true spiritual food. When you do that, how can you be angry? Your anger will dissipate. And so I learned with every enemy that I had within me, I learned how to feed upon the Lamb. And once the enemies within me disappeared, I discovered that I had no enemies outside of me. It may be hard for some to believe, but I have not had a problem with the devil for 30 years. I have not had a problem with an evil spirit. I have not had a problem with depression because I've learned to feed upon the Lamb. Instead of feeling discouraged when you fail, instead of feeling bad because you miss God, and we do. Even today, you know, I feel bad if I, if I miss God. But I never fall under guilt and condemnation. I simply raise my hands to my Father and I begin to feed upon the Lamb. I begin to speak words of spirit and life. One of the most important things that you can learn is that death and life is in the power of your tongue. And you can learn to speak, speak words of life. You can learn to speak words of encouragement to one another. I shared last night how most of us as Christians, we have to wear a mask when we come to church. Because if we were truly open and honest, some of us, even here this morning, have to wear a mask. Because if we didn't, we feel like we wouldn't be accepted. Some of us would say, well, if you really knew that I was a smoker, or if you really knew that I had homosexual tendencies, or if you really knew that I did some things, you wouldn't receive me. The church, I'm speaking now in general, but it's so sad because the church rejects people that need it the most. If you're a sinner, you need to be received into the church. 
I pastored a church for about three years. <clears throat> and I would tell everyone, I wasn't very popular among the churches in my area. But I would say this, and I meant it with all my heart. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care who you are. I don't care what kind of sin is in your life. Just come. Come and let me minister to you. Come and let me share the words of life with you. I don't care if you're a prostitute. I don't care if you're gay. I don't care. Just come. And if you'll come, and you'll sit in our midst, and you'll let me minister life to you, your life will change. There's only one requirement I have, and that is, tell me honestly, do you want God? Do you really want God? Because if you don't, I can't help you. But if you really want God, I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what kind of a lifestyle you're living. I know the truth of your being. I know that deep on the recesses of your being, there is a spirit. And Proverbs 20, 27 says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. And the Gospel of John chapter 1 says that Jesus was the true light that lights every man that comes into the world. So I don't care what you're doing. I won't tell you that you have to change because I know you can't. Not in yourself. But if you will come in amongst people who really know and understand the love of God, and you will let us minister life to you. Let us feed that spiritual man and watch him grow. And as Christ is formed in you, then all of your enemies will be scattered. You see, that's the meaning of the scripture that says, let God arise and his enemies will be scattered. That's why I say your sin is not the problem. God took care of that. We need the Spirit of God to arise in us. And all of our enemies will be scattered. We have a church. We raise up a church of God's people that have that kind of a heart and an understanding. And I can't tell you there were, there were people after people that would just step upon our property and they begin to weep with the presence of God. We had people that would come in amongst us and they would sit and they would listen to the words of God and their life was changed. I, I, I rejoiced when I heard the name of your church, the life-changing church. We should all be life-changing churches. But we must become all-inclusive. You must stop looking at the prostitute or any other person. You have to stop looking at them according to the flesh. Let me read you what Paul says. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16. I think now you will understand this verse where before maybe not. Wherefore, we no longer know any man after the flesh. Yea, we once knew Christ after the flesh, yet henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Well, here's the mystery. 